Here's a cool log in a grow, and I really like these kind of structures because they have pleasant surprises within their solution developments. And that's the case for this integral as well. So without further delay, we're going to call our integral here i for reference purposes. And our solution development hinges on an infinite series expansion for this log x plus 1 term, which is pretty neat, by the way. I mean, you can write log x plus 1 as the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x to the k divided by k. So using this infinite series expansion for log x plus 1, we can write our integral i as the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x to the k divided by k dx. And because this log x term here is independent of the index variable k with respect to which we're performing the summation, we can just slip it inside the summation operator. And we now have the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of log x times negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x to the k uh, divided by k dx. And once we switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators, we can finally express i as the sum over k of, oh, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times x to the k times log x dx. And because this term here is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can just slip it outside the integration operator. So this implies that i equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k times log x dx. Now to evaluate the integral, all we need is some integration by parts. So we're going to differentiate this logarithmic term and we're going to integrate the x to the k term. So one step of integration and differentiation would be enough here. Log x gives you 1 by x on differentiation, and x to the k gives you x to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. And of course, you have these alternating plus and minus signs. So this implies that i can be written as the sum over k of, again, terribly sorry, the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k uh, times all of this junk now. That is x to the k plus 1 times log x divided by k plus 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 times 1 by x. So you can get rid of one of the x's over here and you're only left with x to the k. Okay, cool. Now, oh, oops, sorry about that. The limits here are 0 and 1. And to evaluate this term, we can make use of L'Hopital's rule. So as x approaches 1, log x approaches 0, and x to the k plus 1 approaches 1 as well, so the entire thing collapses to 0. But we need L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the k plus 1 times log x. So we can write this as the limit as x approaches 0 of log x divided by the reciprocal of x to the k plus 1. So applying L'Hopital's rule and differentiating the numerator and the denominator with respect to x, we now have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 by x divided by, you're going to get a k plus 1 uh, divided by x to the k plus 2, right, with a negative sign. Alrighty then. So anyway, you can expand using x to the k plus 2. So multiplying that out upstairs and downstairs, you get some nice cancellation here. And you're left with the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the k plus 1 divided by negative k plus 1, which of course is 0. So this entire term collapses to 0. And you're left with the negative of this integral now. So let me just clean uh, clean up some stuff here and just pop out the negative sign. Oh, wait, we don't need to do that. This is a negative 1, right? And negative 1 times negative 1 to the k should be... Wait, I forgot another one of the negative 1. This was a k plus 1 term. Yeah, I knew something was fishy. 
So this is a k plus 1. There was already a negative 1 here. And negative 1 to the k plus 1 times negative 1 would be k plus 1 plus 1. So that's k plus 2, negative 1 to the k times negative 1 squared, which is negative 1 to the k. Okay, that was nice. That was pretty nice. So uh, enough fun and games. Now all we have to do is evaluate this trivial integral and remove this 0 left over from the evaluation of the lower limit of the first term. And this little, little integral, irrespective of how trivial it is, needs writing space. So yeah, we're going to give it its right to writing space and evaluate it down here. So uh, shift in color. So we now have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k. And this here is a 1 by k plus 1, just a constant times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k. So that's x to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. Again, limits being 0 and 1. So the 0 limit just gives you a 0, and the 1 limit just gives you the reciprocal of k plus 1. So that's all you have. So finally, we can write i. Our integration problem is now a summation problem. We're looking for the sum over the positive integers of negative 1 to the k divided by k times k plus 1 squared. The first step in evaluating this series is a partial fraction decomposition, which gives us 1 by k times k plus 1 squared equal to 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1 minus 1 by k plus 1 squared. So this implies that i equals the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k minus negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 minus negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 squared. So we have three beautiful infinite series all related to the Dirichlet eta function. So let's evaluate them one by one. So first up, we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k. And that's a, that's a bit of a crooked uppercase sigma, right? So yeah, much better. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k. Now we can write this as negative 1 to the k plus 1, provided that we multiply by negative 1 outside as well. So this here is negative 1 times the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 1 which is log 2. So we have negative log 2 as the result of the first summation. And for the second one, uh, we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1. And if I perform a transformation here by letting k plus 1 equal to n, or k equal to n minus 1, that is, so we have the sum over the integers n starting at 2, of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n. And this can be written as the sum over the positive integers n, provided that we subtract the single term corresponding to n equals 1. So that is negative 1 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. So divided by n equals 1. So this is just a 1, and this here is the eta function, once again, evaluated at 1, which gives rise to log 2. So we have log 2 minus 1 as the result of our second sum. And for the third one, we have uh, the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 squared this time. And once again, if we perform the same transformation, we have the sum over the integer starting at 2 of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n squared. And again, writing out the term corresponding to n equals 1, we have negative 1 to the 0 divided by 1 squared, which is, again, 1. And this here is the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 2, which is pi squared by 12. Again, all of this is coming together really nicely. So finally, we can write our the result of our integral i as first up we have negative log 2, then we have to subtract from it this result here. So we have negative log 2 again and a plus 1, and we have minus uh, pi squared by 12 minus 1. So two negatives give you a positive, 
And finally, we conclude that the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times log x plus 1 dx equals 1 minus 2 times log 2 can be written as log 4 minus pi squared by 12. So yeah, that was pretty interesting and I hope you Hold up, hold up. There was a 1 here and a 1 here. So you get 2 minus log 4 minus pi squared by 12. And now I really do hope that you enjoyed the video and I really do hope that you like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.